Now, Lord, we've come to the time of proclamation. Lord, it's way down in the deep well of your word. Bring us up with a fresh anointing, clarity of mind, and speech. Fill our mouth with important stuff. Sit us down when you said enough. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm just so excited about having the temptations here. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. From the text we read into your hearing, I want to lift up uh, verses 27 to 34. It says, But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. My Lord. And this is what Peter says, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus, came toward him. Amen. But when he saw the wind and, and the rain, he was afraid and began to sink, crying out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You little faith, he said, why do you doubt? Amen. And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Mm -hmm. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Mm -hmm. I, I want to talk just for a few moments with you with the aid and the help of the Holy Spirit from this thought. Expecting the unexpected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Expecting the unexpected. Mm -hmm. You know, most of the time we go through our busy days, our life, not thinking uh, much about the foundation that we're standing on. Mm -hmm. Man. You know, all of us sitting in these chairs, we, 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 we have faith that the chair will hold our weight, that, that, that the ground under us is a firm foundation. We, we take confidence in our ability to move from point A to point B, from one place to the next, and, and we rarely think about the ground underneath us, and, and that, 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 that someday it may give way. Uh, but eventually, eventually, we, we, we're reminded that the earth and the ground underneath us is not as firm and secure as we think. Uh, earthquakes make mountains shake and make the ground move from, from under our feet. Sinkholes swallow up and overtake uh, uh, those things that were firmly in place. You, you ever been to anybody's beach? Sand ships and, and it covers that which was on the surface. The water overtakes things on the shore and, and then water freezes as the ground, uh, freezes as hard as the ground that you walk on. Uh, things that you think are firm aren't always as firm as you think. My Lord. Banks close their doors and businesses go under. Staples in our communities are no longer around. Buildings that you grew up seeing are no longer in existence. All right. All right. And anybody that right. grew up in, in, in the Renaissance city of North New Jersey, wow. just drive through. You won't wow. know, you won't know it if you drive down there. That's true. And it's in these moments we are acutely aware that our minds have been trained to perceive the unsteady as steady. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the infirm as firm, the shaky as solid, and the weak being strong. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we oftentimes place our hopes and our dreams on what we perceive as firm, a firm foundation or solid rock, but really uh, it's shaky ground. That's true, that's true. What we perceive, perceive as a brick wall turns into paper mache. My Lord. Uh, people we've looked to as infallible have let us down. That's true. Uh, 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 and some people that we've looked to, uh, uh, the media now and, and the powers to be are pulling them down. That's Amen. That's right. That's right. That's right. Ruining, ruining their reputation. All right. 
and their legacy. Wow. Uh, sometimes, sometimes uh, we're reminded, we're reminded because, because folks that we looked up to have let us down, folks that have held us have dropped us. Mm -hmm. and, and it is at these times that we're reminded that our perceptions and sense of security can be misleading. And they can be limiting, uh, and they limit the possibilities that we should envision. And restricting, they restrict the extraordinary and the unexpected in our lives. That's right, that's right. So when we see something that's really a firm foundation, we don't know it when we see it. Uh, let's look at the text. Jesus had a very eventful day. That's right, that's right. Uh, he's coming off the news of the beheading of his cousin, John the Baptist. Oh, Lord. Amen. He goes to uh, on, on a boat by himself to get some one-on-one -on -one time with his father. Amen. Uh, and as he sails, the, 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 the crowds begin to follow him. And, and, and the Bible says that there was a crowd of 5,000 or so. And, and that's just men. We're not including the women and the children. And, right. and, and, and he begins to touch and he begins to heal the sick and, and, and cure every manner of sickness. My Lord. Uh, uh, the evening came and the disciples said, we need to send them on their way. Uh, Jesus said, well, we need to feed them first. What do we have? He said, well, all we have is five loaves and two little fish. Uh, Jesus says, has has fed these 5,000 uh, men, not including the women and children. And and he goes, he puts the, the, the disciples on a boat and he goes off into a mountain by himself. Mm -hmm. and, and we now find Jesus uh, walking on the water. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, and, and I don't want to keep you too long because I know right, some of you want to do some things this afternoon. But but uh, uh, we see Jesus doing a miracle that has never been done before. We see him walking on water. And, and I got three little R's and I'll be out of your way. But but the first thing the text shows us, the, 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 the text shows us is that, that, that we need to begin running after Jesus. I got three R's. Not, not reading, writing, and arithmetic. But, but I got three R's. The first R is we need to learn how to run after Jesus. Look at verse 22. And, uh, uh, verse, verse 22. It, it says that uh, Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat, and uh, and he went ahead of them onto the other side. While his disciples, uh, while he dismissed the crowd, after he had dismissed them, he went up into the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance off, and uh, the wind began to, to, to rage and buffet the boat. And because the disciples became afraid, Jesus now comes after his disciples. Amen. I like that. I like that. Uh, so Jesus had been trying, the disciples had been traveling with Jesus. They, they were familiar with, with, with Jesus at, at this point in his ministry. They had seen what the man, Jesus, could do. They had seen and witnessed miraculous signs and wonders, and, wow. and, and I think I think I think we skim over uh, uh, the signs and and the extraordinary, astounding, astonishing work that Jesus performed. I, I, I think we just we dismiss it. Mm -hmm. My Lord. As, as fairy tale or, or, or something that the preacher uh, wants to get a stir in the crowd, he wants to talk about. But we can't dismiss the miracles and signs and wonders of Jesus. Wow, wow. Uh, he had just fed 5,000 people with five loaves and two little fish, a, a, a little boy's happy meal. We can't dismiss My that. Lord. Uh, 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 he had seen them, uh, seen Jesus touch the lame, and, and they begin to walk again. Withered hands now uh, are firm and now can grip and grab again. Don't dismiss the miracles and the wonders of Jesus. Oh, Amen. We dismiss it like, oh, that was there, but Jesus did it then, can do it today. 
today to try right. to dismiss, don't dismiss the miracle. That's right. That's right. Uh, and, and so the Bible says a storm arises and trouble uh, troubles the disciples' little boat. And, and before their very eyes, the one that they know, the one that they've seen do these miracles, now defies the law of nature and begins water walking. Woo! I like that. I like that. Here comes Jesus. Uh, knowing that his boys are in trouble and he uh, uh, he wants to get to them as quickly as possible. So he doesn't swim. He doesn't jump on the boat. He begins to walk on the water. Uh, uh, I submit to you today what Jesus is doing is closing the gap between him and them. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Uh, whenever you're in trouble, you need to close the gap between yourself uh -huh. and Jesus. Right. Right. <laughs> we, we, we talk about it. All kind of gaps today. We, oh. we talk about the generational gap. And we talk about the financial gap. But, yeah. but my brothers and my sisters, when there's a gap between you and Jesus, you might as well understand that there'll be trouble in the middle. Yeah. So you need to close the gap. I, I like that. When there's trouble in your life, you need to close the gap between you and Jesus. Yeah. If you're having trouble with your kids, you need to close the gap between between you and Jesus. Uh, when you're having trouble on your job, uh, I like this. Jesus will close the gap between you and him. Uh, we need to start closing the gap. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Between us and Jesus. Now, I didn't stop. I didn't come by to insult anybody's intelligence today. Uh, but I know that if there's a gap between me and something, uh, I want to get there as quick as I can. And, and instead of walking, I learned to run after Jesus. Uh, we need to close the gap by running after Jesus. An uh, old song used to say, I've been running for Jesus a long time. And I ain't tired yet. My brothers and my sisters, if you want to close the gap, you need to start running after Jesus. Close the financial gap. Run after Jesus. You got a gap in your family. Run to Jesus and close the gap. Uh, so the first R is we have to learn to run after Jesus. Amen. The second R <coughs> that the text shows us is that we've got to reframe our minds. My Lord. It, it, it's in the text. Wow. It's in the text. Look at verse uh, 26. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. Wow. It's a ghost. Oh my God. Uh, they started yelling and bugging out. It's a, it's a ghost. My Lord. We got to reframe our minds. Uh, instead of them celebrating Jesus, the disciples become afraid. They think he's a ghost. <laughs> Although they had just been with the man. Uh, isn't that crazy? They had just been with Jesus, but they didn't recognize who he was. How come uh, we can't recognize Jesus when Jesus shows up? How come our minds take us to the worst possible outcomes? Uh, we, uh, we get a letter in the mail and we go to the worst possible outcome. Uh, we always take it far to the right. Uh, we always take it to the end result instead of us seeing Jesus. Uh, I submit to you today uh, that fear will distort your vision. Fear will have brothers and sisters turn on one another. Fear will come between relationships. Fear will put a wedge in the middle. Will distort your vision if you see something that ain't there. I like snacks at night. And so sometimes I come in the middle of the night. And I came down one night and somebody had put this crazy little thing in the chair. Little doll in the chair. Now, I know nobody was sitting up in my living room. My Lord. I looked, and then I peeked around again. My Lord. I got my little snack, and I ran back upstairs. Fear 
will have you see things that ain't even made. They saw Jesus coming towards them. And fear told them that it was a ghost. But my brothers and my sisters, if it was a ghost, it was the Holy Ghost. Fear will come between her and put a wedge between her. that skewed their ability to know who he was. You see, Jesus may not come the way you think he'll come. Uh, the way you think it'll turn out. Is it the way Jesus will always work it out? But the way he works it out is going to be much better than any way you could have worked it out. You ever been in a situation that Jesus worked it out Frame. 
saved by the words of Jesus. For a moment, he walked out on his potential and possibilities. For a moment, he looked through the lenses of faith. And he took heart. He saw new prospects and new opportunities. So he indeed takes heart. He trusts in the Lord. the most grueling races one can participate in. I, I'm not a marathon runner. That's all right. That's all right. I'm a sprinter. I ain't trying to train for a marathon. <laughs> and, 
And some people train year round just to not to win a marathon. That's right, that's right. But just to finish. Just to finish the marathon. But I was reading about this Indian tribe in northern Mexico. My Lord. It's called the Terra Hakamara Indians. Y'all Google it. My Lord. Uh, they went, they, they, they have no 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 framework of marathon races. They, they, they don't know about marathons. Uh, uh, but but they, they they never heard of the New York Marathon or or the Boston Marathon. They they they, they don't have uh, uh, Nike Airs on their feet. They don't have special running shoes. They uh, uh, they don't have a uh, uh, Gatorade stops and and they don't have people handing them water like they do on, on marathons. But but this tribe has been known to run nonstop. For 36 hours, uh, you, you see, they, they they totally have a different framework for what is possible. Here, Amen. some of us are training uh, to run a little marathon. Right. I, I'm talking about five to 20, 20 miles. But these Indians in northern uh, Mexico have no framework of that. And so running uh, is nothing to them. When you can run for 36 hours uh, and don't even break a sweat, uh, that's a new framework. And my brothers and my sisters, all I'm trying to say is that we need to reframe our minds. Start running after Jesus. To only expect the unexpected, the expected, uh, and trust only in that which we already know. We sometimes place our senses uh, of certainty and security in those things that we already know, making them a solid foundation. But my brothers and my sisters, contrary, our security and our trust needs to be in God. The solid foundation on this rock. I built my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He is the solid rock. So during these times, when we're called to step out on faith, we need to follow uh, the example of Peter. Step out of the boat. Step out on faith. Something about them, uh, something about our Lord. Uh, there are some things I may not know. There are some places uh, I cannot go. But I am sure of this one thing that God is real. Yeah. 
today. We invite you to come while the blood is still running over your veins. While you still yet have a chance, while you get a clean time to do it. If it is what we invite you to come.
the old year. Thank you. 